ਜੀ ਫੋਨ ਦੇ ਵਿੱਚ ਆਪ ਸਭ ਦਾ ਨਿੱਕਾ ਸਵਾਗਤ ਹੈ ਜਿਸ ਤਰ੍ਹਾਂ ਕਿ ਤੁਹਾਨੂੰ ਪਤਾ ਹੀ ਹੈ ਕਿ ਮਿਊਨਿਸਪਲ ਇਲੈਕਸ਼ਨ ਖਤਮ ਹੋ ਚੁੱਕੇ ਹਨ ਤਿੰਨੀ ਸਿਟੀਜ਼ ਦੇ ਵਿੱਚ ਸਾਡੇ ਨਵੇਂ ਮੇਅਰ ਆਏ ਹਨ ਤੇ ਸਾਡੇ ਵਾਸਤੇ ਪ੍ਰਾਊਡ ਦੀ ਗੱਲ ਹੈ ਕਿ ਆਮ ਸਿਟਿੰਗ ਵਿਦ ਨਿਊ ਮੇਅਰ ਆਫ ਬ੍ਰੈਂਪਟਨ ਲਿੰਡਾ ਜੈਫਰੀ ਲਿੰਡਾ ਵੈਲਕਮ ਟੂ ਮਾਈ ਸ਼ੋ ਥੈਂਕ ਯੂ ਐਜ਼ ਐਜ਼ ਯੂ نو ਦੈਟ ਸੂਜ਼ਨ ਇਜ਼ ਗੋਨ ਹੇਜ਼ਲ ਮਕੈਲਮ ਇਜ਼ ਗੋਨ ਐਂਡ ਰਾਫ ਫੋਰਡ ਇਜ਼ ਗੋਨ ਲਿੰਡਾ ਯੂ ਹੈਵ ਬੀਨ ਇਨ ਦ ਕਾਉਂਸਲ ਆਲਮੋਸਟ ਫੋਰ 8 ਇਅਰਸ ਰਾਈਟ I was on council actually for 12 years. Oh, for 12 years. And then I went to the province yeah. for almost no, 11. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, 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 that's what I want to ask you. Mm -hmm. You were in the council, there yep. was no opposition, and then you went to the uh, uh, province, there was the opposition, you were the minister. Mm -hmm. Now you come back to uh, to Brampton as a first lady of Brampton. How can you explain a little bit uh, that travel? Uh, I ran municipally in 2000, actually in 1991, just mm -hmm. after our mayor drowned, Ken Willens drowned at the time. And there were seven new councillors then, mm -hmm. just like there are seven right. new councillors this time. And I ran because I wanted to represent my community well, and I enjoyed it. I was there for 12 years, mm -hmm. four terms, because at that time, councillors sat for three-year terms, yeah, not four. Right, yes. And I enjoyed it. But mm -hmm. then I was wooed by the province to come and sit at the province and to try and build better health care, mm -hmm. better highways, to get our fair share in funding. And uh, that's where I've been for the last decade, doing that work. And mm -hmm. then I was asked... For the last year, people have been coming to me and saying, we don't know what's happening at City of Brampton. We're really ashamed. We're embarrassed. Would you come back and run for mayor? Mm -hmm. And after some thought and di discussion with a number of people that I trust, I decided to come back. So. Okay. Uh, now you are uh, elected as a mayor. You have, I, I think, about uh, six new councils now. Four are still old people. Mm -hmm. How you will cope with them because as far as uh, our city is going, Uh, no, there is no accountability, there is a lot of fraud that going on. Uh, mm -hmm. How you will cope that one now? Well, as you said, there are some new faces on council and there are some people who are experienced and the voters chose. You mm -hmm. know, they chose yeah. change. They didn't choose to change all of council, but they made a significant change. And I think mm -hmm. that was a very loud message that they want accountability, they want transparency. They want to trust that the people who sit at the council table are spending their taxpayers' dollars mm -hmm. properly. And I think over the last year, at least, We have learned about the forensic audit. We've learned about problems with procurement. We've learned about capital infrastructure that council had lost track of. This council has been distracted. They've been fighting with themselves, fighting with their neighbors, fighting with the provincial and federal governments. That hasn't served Brampton well. So I believe that this new council uh, is interested in turning the page and starting fresh and working on things that I've been talking about, which is a lobbyist registry, mm -hmm. uh, posting your expenses online, uh, third-party accountability agreements with regards to the budget. No, why we need a third party? Because uh, if, uh, if uh, from the city staff, which is a uh, bureaucrats, if they are monitoring right away when the, when the claims are coming, yeah. why, the, why they can't they monitor at that time instead of we are paying quarter million dollars to the forensic report uh, audit? So there are a couple of reasons why you need 30 third party endorsement of your budget. I don't actually believe what we've been told. Right. We've been told we are a triple A credit rated community. I don't believe that. We've been told we are debt free. I don't believe that. Mm -hmm. In fact, I think in the coming weeks we will learn that we're not debt free and that there are some serious problems with our finances. So there is either people who are not doing their jobs or they're sugar coating the information that we're getting. Mm -hmm. uh, numbers are black and white, right. or, or black and red in, in the case of a bank balance. Mm -hmm. we, ha we don't have a lot of numbers in the black. We have a lot of debt, mm -hmm. and we, I think, have overextended ourselves. Uh, I spoke with the city manager just recently, and we're going to be getting to the bottom of those numbers, and we're going to share that with the public. We, I think, have some very difficult choices ahead. We may have overextended ourselves financially. We're being sued. There are mm -hmm. some lawsuits right. out there that will also uh, curtail the kind of work that we can do going forward. But it's important to tell the truth, and it's important to be honest with the residents. Mm -hmm. We're a high-growth community. We need uh, more investment in those infrastructure projects as much mm -hmm. as possible because that essentially uh, provides the quality of life that we all enjoy, right. good transit, uh, good services. It brings jobs to the city of Brampton. And those are the conversations that we have to have. Yeah, I was going to touch on that job at, 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 at a little bit later in the program. Sure. And uh, as for that uh, audit report is going on, Susan uh, declared, I think, two days before the election date, mm -hmm. that she is clear. She got a green check. Yep. Who paid for the second audit? She, uh, is she done it 
at, at her womb? No. Or, 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 or we taxpayer paid it? My understanding is that we, the taxpayers, paid for it. And she's provided some advice that essentially would have limited the amount of the, the dollars that uh, the mayor would be re required to pay back. Mm -hmm. But this is a, a, an additional report that all of council agreed to that they sent out for uh, additional information and, and evaluation. I think it's hard to say that anybody has been exonerated mm -hmm. because at this point the report has gone to the o OPP, the right. Ontario Provincial yes, Police, yes. for an investigation. We're going to have to wait and see what their uh, report comes back with. But unfortunately, everybody on council is under that cloud of suspicion until they have been exonerated no. by the OPP. Okay, I'm concerned about that one because uh, I know that uh, in the last uh, council meeting I was there too and uh, it was, uh, uh, I, we left early because uh, they don't want to, dis uh, they don't want to disclose any amounts owing, they yep. don't want to discuss on that one. Yeah. But it was, case was gone to OPP before that one. Yes. Can you do another audit during that period? Uh, I think, you know, council has uh, shown that they can do just about anything, anytime. They can change the rules mm -hmm. to suit themselves. They can put in value-based judgment rather than results-based. Mm -hmm. uh, that's not how we do accounting at the province of Ontario or at most banks, I would argue. Mm -hmm. uh, I think that it's time that we be we come clean with the residents of Brampton about mm -hmm. how their money is being spent. It's not our money. Mm -hmm. It is everybody's That's money. Right. It's the taxpayer. There's only one taxpayer. Yeah. And we need to be honest about how those dollars are being spent. Mm -hmm. So it is my plan to bring in some very clear rules about uh, how much you get uh, reimbursed, that you'll have to provide a receipt, right. that we aren't going to go on your word as to what monies you've spent. And we're going to have to make sure that we're clear about who can uh, bid on work so that we get three bids on one piece of work. We have to be really um, honest and transparent about how finances are managed on a go-forward basis. And uh, I'll bring some of those recommendations to the table. It's something that I've promised in my platform in the first 100 days that we will address that uh, accountability and transparency very, very early on. Yes, since we are talking about uh, accountability, how about discretionary funds? Is there no definition that where those funds are allowable to use for the city? They are, it's not monitored or, or, or there's no category-wise uh, list over there or uh, it's not? Uh, you know, I think council, uh, and, and frankly, probably in their, you know, in their defense, it has been something that's evolved over a number of years mm -hmm. and what councillors have had to do before and what they do now is very different. We use different social media and the way you would communicate with your residents has changed. Mm -hmm. It's, uh, I, I guess the only problem is when Deloitte comes and tells you that you have breached your credit card agreement, right. not just for American Express, but for MasterCard, right. you have a problem. Mm -hmm. So we need to provide much more clarity and, and um, you know, uh, transparency to the residents right. about what is approved and what isn't and that you can't spend the money until it is approved if it's over a certain dollar figure. And I think what we learned from the newspaper and, and certainly from the forensic audit was that most people broke the rules, mm -hmm. felt that they were following them, and uh, we need to provide more clarity not only to them but to the public mm -hmm. what's appropriate. Mm -hmm. Okay, so how you will bring that accountability to the Bentonians? Because then we will jump to the next topic. So one of the things I, I have talked about is posting your expenses online. That's routine in right. federal government and provincial government, not only of elected officials, but of the staff, okay. so that you know where senior staff are spending their money. Mm -hmm. uh, I think posting those are important. A lobbyist registry is important. Mm -hmm. People who come to talk to counselors frequently want them to approve residential development. Mm -hmm. uh, if you approve it, they make money, okay. that, and then they make a profit, and then they leave the city. If it's in Brampton's best interest, that's great. But we need to know who's talking to who, why they're talking to them, and we need to make sure that uh, everybody knows uh, that it is not a, a friendly relationship, it is a business relationship. Mm -hmm. So we need to know the gifts that are okay. potentially changing hands, mm -hmm. whether you're golfing with people, if you're having lunch, uh, if you're going on vacation. Those are all, to me, improper that's a relationships yeah. that you do with friends but not with business acquaintances that are trying to essentially get you to purchase gifts and uh, and services for the residents of Brampton. Viewers, uh, we are talking to First Lady of uh, Brampton which will be sworn on December 2nd, Linda Jeffrey, our new mayor, who will be right back after this message.
Hey, folks, I'm here to endorse the Disability Network. They are great people. They're people that get by, they employ, they support, and they really, really get behind people with disabilities. So come on, let's throw our support behind a great cause, the Disability Network. Welcome back on the South Asian Vision TV program. Uh, we are talking to our new mayor of Brampton, Linda Jaffe. Linda, welcome back after the break. Thank you. Okay, tell us your, uh, what your present plans are. Well, as we speak in this interview, uh, I'm cleaning up my campaign office and putting together a transition team. So mm -hmm. a transition team is somebody that, uh, or a group of people that help advise you in the coming months as you enter a new job. And becoming a mayor of a city of this size of 550,000 people is, is pretty serious. Mm -hmm. So you want to make sure you have uh, a long-term blueprint and how you manage some of the um, issues you uh, inc uh, discover as you arrive in the mayor's mm -hmm. office is something that this group of people will help me. Mm -hmm. There's some lawyers, there's some uh, business people, there's uh, people who um, understand uh, property uh, law and residential development, um, labor law. Mm -hmm. So I, I have a group of people that have some different kinds of experiences that will help us uh, transition as a team into the city hall and, and provide leadership and hit the ground running. Don't get sworn in until uh, December 1st. Yeah. And then uh, there will be meetings, uh, early meetings. Uh, and then January pretty much is when we kind of hit the ground running and start making decisions. But I, I am having conversations with a number of individuals now to mm -hmm. prepare for those early weeks uh, in the council chambers. Uh, it's been uh, called that uh, uh, Brampton's mayor is, has highest salary in Canada. Yep. What you're going to, I, I heard that you're going to reduce that one. You want to disclose that? I one? will. I have been talking about it with many residents and I think that, that it's a huge irritant for many residents to, mm -hmm. to know that our mayor earns more than the Premier of Ontario and many mayors across Canada. So I've always felt that the mayor should never earn more than a cabinet minister. And when I was a cabinet minister, I earned $165,800. Mm -hmm. That's exactly what I would earn mm -hmm. as the mayor of Brampton. So I will put a motion on the floor that the salary be reduced to that level so that the mayor earns a salary from the city and from the region. Together, mm -hmm. it will be one hundred and sixty-five eight. Okay. And uh, I don't need a limousine. And, you know, I know a lot of our residents are working hard. They have more than one job. Mm -hmm. Many of them work in the trucking business or they drive a taxi. And they work very hard, long hours, and they pay very high property taxes, so they want to know that their mayor is living within the means of, and that are reasonable. When uh, there's a salary increase in the cities or in the province or in the federal, mm -hmm. they don't even ask the voters whether we should increase or not, they increase from 20, 30, 40 yeah. percent. While people who are working in the factories, they don't get a salary increase that that level. Why is that? So ideally, what you do is you you tell residents that after this term you will raise it if you think that you are not providing a salary that's commensurate for the, the job responsibility. This council did not do that. In fact, this council put a group of people together, friends of councillors, who were on a salary compensation committee. And they essentially, in, this year, gave sal salary increases, a severance increases, a pension, health care benefits outside the country, backdated it to 2010, this year, and then raised our property taxes. Right. I think that's it. It's, it's kind of, it isn't kind of, it is dishonest. Did you say backdated? They backdated it to 2010. Oh. So that was a very substantive increase for council uh -huh. that they should have really, if they felt that they were not being properly compensated, what they should have said is, for the next round of council, this is what the salary will be. Mm -hmm. You don't ever fix your salary while you're in that office. Okay. Some levels of government tie the salary to uh, consumer price index, mm -hmm. but you really need to com you need to communicate that to the public. Otherwise, they don't trust you. Yeah. And there's a reason why there was such a big turnover in council so, so, this time. So basically, you have a big challenge in front of you that uh, you have to gain that people's trust. Who send you as a mayor now? I think that. Uh, mayors and all elected officials, right. their word is their bond. And if you uh, lose the trust of the voters, you have a problem. So mm -hmm. I think, you know, certainly this election was very clear. People wanted change. They were fed up and 
embarrassed and ashamed about what was happening at City Hall. And I think they sent a very clear message that they wanted they wanted to choose change. Yeah. Okay. Uh, how about your budget process? Uh, how are you how are you looking at? So right now I've I've uh, I've had one conversation with the city manager, and I will be sitting down with the rest of the leadership team at the city of Brampton and mm -hmm. council mm -hmm. to talk about the budget in early January. We'll have some preliminary conversations in uh, December to kind of because the first part of the first six weeks is is an orientation for new councillors yeah. and we have so many new councillors we want to make sure we don't overwhelm them with everything but they will learn about how the budget process will work the city manager says he has a new process mm -hmm. uh, I haven't been at the city for 10 years it's a different kind of a budget than I was used to as a minister so okay. uh, I, I think that we will I know that we will find ways to include the public to engage them to invite them into talking about it because budgets are service levels mm -hmm. how quickly you cut your grass, how quickly you uh, clear the snow, um, how quickly your um, fire truck gets to your house. Those are all service levels that need to be discussed and make sure that it's affordable mm -hmm. and that we have a plan going forward. Mm -hmm. And in one uh, in a city, when they clean the snow, they clean their driveways too in the front of that. Yeah. Are you planning to bring that one? Uh, That's on a service city? level yeah. that certainly yeah. many people have raised with me, particularly yeah. seniors. Yeah, yeah. Seniors are very concerned about staying in their homes, being able to get of their, out of their driveway. Mm -hmm. And uh, I would say that it's something that will come up in this year's budget conversation. Okay. Uh, I don't know that we can provide the level of service that Vaughn does because the finances at the city, to me, mm -hmm. are more problematic. Mm -hmm. We have a number of serious challenges coming at us. I don't know what the books will tell us. Okay. I'm going to find out in the coming weeks. But certainly, how often you cut your grass and how often you plow the snow mm -hmm. is a service level okay. that council decides. Okay. Uh, there was a one uh, an, a question was uh, during the, during the campaign election campaign about affordable housing. Mm -hmm. I understand that there's not much uh, availability in Brampton. Yeah. But I uh, I have a question at my own that who is monitoring that who is whatever houses are allotted are they eligible or not? So Doesn't mean I mean fraud level. Yeah. You know, I'm talking. About. So affordable housing is a big issue. I'm yeah. a former minister of municipal affairs and housing, right. and I believe that we need more affordable housing, and our wait list in the region of Peel is too long. Uh, how the, it is monitored at the region, uh, I haven't worked at the region, but my understanding is they do keep a track of it. But I think that's something that uh, the, minister, the, um, this, the uh, CEO at mm -hmm. the city of Brampton has been talking to me is a fraud line. Yeah. That may be something that if the region doesn't have in place, maybe we should talk about because I think there is a discomfort in uh, the people that I've talked to that people who are eligible for housing mm -hmm. and are deserving of it may not be able to access it because other people are, are somehow gaming the system. Yeah. So that, I think all of us want it yeah. to be fair and for families that really are single families mm -hmm. or, or people that are disadvantaged, seniors, disabled, we want them to get the service and the housing that they need but we don't want people to take advantage. Now, the, the reason I'm asking is because I, knew, I know a few families in Mississauga. They are living in the common law. They apply for the housing. They got it, and they give it that house to for renting. But they're living there in, in their own house, and that's a fraud. That's and fraud. And people who deserve it, they're not getting no, it. No, so that's so fraud, that's and we need to take care of that and stop it because mm -hmm. uh, that's not fair. Okay. Another big issue, uh, grid block, LRT. Yeah. Yes. How, what are your plans are? So I think anybody who's watching this uh, curses the, the traffic in Brampton, whether you're driving it in a car, in a truck, mm -hmm. uh, we certainly have a lot more time that we have to dedicate to traveling across the city. Mm -hmm. And many people in this community really need traffic to work, whether you drive a taxi, whether mm -hmm. you drive a limo, whether you drive a truck. Uh, it's taking you longer and longer to get across the city. So we, we need better highways, we need better buses, we need better GO service, and we need light rapid transit. Mm -hmm. Right now, the city of Brampton is not really seriously engaged with Metrolinx, which is the provincial organization right. that oversees all transit across Ontario, because the city did not provide clear guidance through the form of uh, a motion. Mm -hmm. So we need, to be, we need to say yes to light rapid transit, Right now, we said yes, then we said no, then we said maybe. Yes, that's right. So if you don't provide clear direction, the province doesn't work with you. Mm -hmm. uh, I would like to raise this issue with this new council okay. to say, let's get into the conversation. Let's be more serious about it. Because if we don't, it's going to stop at the border between Mississauga, Mississauga and, and Brampton. And, yeah. and we need it to come in. Okay. We may uh, negotiate the route about how it comes into Brampton, but we need LRT to come into Brampton. Oh, okay, another issue is at the same time that uh, there's a, 
uh, a bridge over on the ghost street. Yeah. Because the, uh, and I've been listening to the Misaga Council and Misaga in the debates even that Brampton is not not coming forward to resolve that issue. Yeah. They have the funding available. Brampton is coming. What you will do with that? I've heard a lot about this. Uh, a lot of residents said that this, to them, was the election issue, and that it was a uh, huge. It's always election issue. <laughs> for for last you know what, it's, election it's election. about neighborhood issues yeah. and making sure that we have people that uh, can get back and forth to work mm -hmm. and not have to go great detours around right. their neighborhood to get home. Yeah. Uh, certainly, I will look into it, and uh, you know, this is one of those issues that is a, a neighborhood issue that regional and city councillors need to deal right. with. So I believe there's some new uh, city. Uh, representation in that part of the world and uh, I would recommend that councillors get involved in, in having conversations. We are talking to Linda Jaffrey, our new mayor in Brampton. We'll be right back after the break. Hey folks, I'm here to endorse the Disability Network. They are great people. They're people that get by, they employ, they support, and they really, really get behind people with disabilities. So come on, let's throw our support behind a great cause, the Disability Network. Welcome back on the South Asian Vision TV program. Uh, we are talking to Linda Jaffrey, our new mayor of Brampton. Uh, Linda, welcome back again. Thank you. Okay. University. Do Brampton need a university? I'm asking you a question and do you explore yourself? I think we do. I think we've been talking about it for a decade and mm -hmm. I think it would only add profile and uh, a positive impression of a, of a high growth community. We're so close to Toronto, we're so close to all of the major markets uh, that uh, provide that economic development. And uh, you know, I, I know a lot of families that I've talked to when I was out door knocking, they see it as an affordability issue mm -hmm. as well. They don't want their children to have to go far away to go to university, they want them to stay and live at home and not have to pay for residence. Mm -hmm. And they also want to be able to have a choice, mm -hmm. whether they go to college or university, it would be nice to have it in a city of this size. We're the ninth largest in Canada. I think uh, university think, is appropriate for yeah. our community. It's uh, unfortunately, um, this council didn't get their act together. Um, okay. I've talked at many uh, events over the summer uh, about the fact, I, I like sports analogies and I say, you know, if you're a soccer parent, you know that if you want to win the game, you don't sit on the bench. You have to get off the bench, go out on the field, chase the ball, put it in the net. This council sat on the bench and waited for business and universities mm -hmm. to come to Brampton. You can't do that. You need to go out and chase them. They went to Sheridan as their very first choice. Sheridan, I love it. I'm a mother of a Sheridan graduate, but I would never mm -hmm. have chosen Sheridan as my first choice. Okay. I would have chosen a York, a U of T, a McMaster, and a Western University and asked mm -hmm. them to come to Brampton to bring uh, that prestige and that uh, high profile to mm -hmm. Brampton. So that's something that I will still pursue, although mm -hmm. the city did not put uh, uh, a business case to the province of Ontario. Mm -hmm. the, the deadline has passed and we right. missed that opportunity mm -hmm. of the three universities that the province talked about, okay. those campuses that, this, the, that the, the Premier announced uh, and the Minister of Training Colleges mm -hmm. and Universities. Mm -hmm. So it's unfortunate. I wish we had done a better job, but certainly I will work on it. I've spoken with Premier Bill Davis about mm -hmm. it. Mm -hmm. He's interested. And uh, I actually talked with somebody at U of T this week they're very eager to talk to us. Okay. So now, now I will let you talk about uh, basement apartments, okay. youth strategy, yep. and the seniors. What so do you want to do with for them? So I think uh, we talked earlier about affordable housing and right. needing more yes. of it, and yes. I believe that too. And I think that we need to legalize basement apartments. We okay. need to get on with that issue. It's provincially mandated that we need to address the affordability mm -hmm. issue mm -hmm. to help seniors, help young people with affordable housing, help people who've just bought that first home mm -hmm. to have that little extra income. Mm -hmm. I want them to be safe. We need a f safe way in and a safe way out, so we're right. going to have to work with the fire department and with people who look at the building code, make sure that there are no load-bearing walls that have been removed. Mm -hmm. But we need to find a way to make them work in our community mm -hmm. so there is more affordable housing. And certainly that f feeds into the youth strategy and the senior strategy. A lot of young people ha uh, were engaged in this election in a big way. Uh, for the first time, mm -hmm. and they are our future. If we don't build jobs, if we don't build opportunities for them in the future, they won't. 
They'll leave right. and they won't come back. That's age. And they are our future. Mm -hmm. And certainly seniors this summer were very um, demonstrative with me. They, mm -hmm. they invited me to their meetings and they had tents and microphones and podiums and chairs and they came to me with a list of all the things that they wanted and they want to be engaged in this next uh, term of council. Mm -hmm. And I appreciate that they did that and they worked as a team to bring their wishes and their their uh, requests mm -hmm. to me and uh, I, I plan to work with them in the coming weeks and months to make sure that they have safe walking routes, that they have shelters, okay. that they are able to use the recreation centers and hopefully the schools to make sure that they have opportunities to, to work together, to stay healthy, to stay connected, to stay home as long as they possibly can and to feel productive because they're wonderful volunteers. They, they are a safety net okay. and uh, seniors are our future too. I look like uh, whatever promise you have made during the campaign, you are, have plans to yep. fulfill those ones. They, there are my plans, and yeah. uh, I know that people are watching to make sure that we deliver. We are talking to Linda Jaffrey, our new mayor in Brampton, and uh, we will uh, keep talking with her every month or every six weeks. I would like to ask you, send me questions, send me your concerns. If you cannot reach her, you can reach us. You can send your question. We will ask, and we'll convey the message to her. And at the end, what do you want to say to our viewers? Brampton, thanks for getting out and voting. This was a very important election, and you chose change for better Brampton. I'm really pleased that uh, the election is over, yeah. number one. It was a long campaign, but uh, I'm pleased that we have a new council, and uh, I will plan to work with them to bring some of the changes that we've talked to, to you about over the past uh, months, and I look forward to working for you. And thank you for watching today, and I look forward to future conversations. Thank you very much, Linda. Thank you.